Chapter 23. Woe to the shepherds, which refers to the terrible leaders of Israel at this time, who are destroying and scattering the sheep of my pasture, declares the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord God of Israel concerning the shepherds who are tending my people. You have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not attended to them. Behold, I am about to attend to you for the evil of your deeds, declares the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them and bring them back to their pasture, and they will be fruitful and multiply. I will also raise up shepherds over them, and they will tend them, and they will not be afraid any longer, nor be terrified, nor will any be missing, declares the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he will reign as king and act wisely and do justice and righteousness in the land. And you know who this is. Verse 6. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will dwell securely. And this is his name by which he will be called. The Lord, our righteousness. Interesting title and definitely consistent with the Trinity. Verse 7. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when they will no longer say, as the Lord lives, who brought up the sons of Israel from the land of Egypt, but as the Lord lives, who brought up and led back the descendants of the household of Israel from the north land and from all the countries where I had driven them. Then they will live on their own soil. God promised that the restoration of Israel would be greater than the creation of Israel. All right, now Jeremiah chimes in. As for the prophets, my heart is broken within me. All my bones tremble. I have become like a drunken man, even like a man overcome with wine, because of the Lord and because of his holy words. For the land is full of adulterers, for the land mourns because of the curse. The pastures of the wilderness have dried up. Their course also is evil, and their might is not right. For both prophet and priest are polluted. Even in my house I have found their wickedness, declares the Lord. Therefore, their way will be like slippery paths to them. They will be driven away into the gloom and fall down in it. For I will bring calamity upon them, the year of their punishment, declares the Lord. Moreover, among the prophets of Samaria, I saw an offensive thing. They prophesied by Baal and led my people Israel astray. Also among the prophets of Jerusalem, I have seen a horrible thing the committing of adultery and walking in falsehood. And they strengthen the hands of evildoers so that no one has turned back from his wickedness. All of them have become to me like Sodom and their inhabitants like Gomorrah. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets, behold, I'm going to feed them wormwood and make them drink poisonous water. For from the prophets of Jerusalem, pollution has gone forth into all the land. Thus says the Lord of hosts, do not listen to the words of the prophets who are prophesying to you. They are leading you into futility. They speak a vision of their own imagination, not from the mouth of the Lord. We always have to test what people say in comparison with scripture. Amen. We can't go by people's gut feelings, visions, or what God spoke to them. We always have to check it with the Bible. Verse 17, they keep saying to those who despise me, the Lord has said, you will have peace. And as for everyone who walks in the stubbornness of his own heart, they say, calamity will not come upon you. But who has stood in the counsel of the Lord that he should see and hear his word? Who has given heed to his word and listened? Behold, the storm of the Lord has gone forth in wrath, even a whirling tempest. It will swirl down on the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he has performed and carried out the purposes of his heart. In the last days, you will clearly understand it. I did not send these prophets, but they ran. I did not speak to them, but they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, then they would have announced my words to my people and would have turned them back from their evil way and from the evil of their deeds. Am I a God who is near, declares the Lord, and not a God far off? Can a man hide himself in hiding places so I do not see him, declares the Lord. Do I not fill the heavens and the earth, declares the Lord. I have heard what the prophets have said who prophesy falsely in my name, saying, I had a dream, I had a dream. How long? 
Is there anything in the hearts of the prophets who prophesy falsehood, even these prophets of the deception of their own heart, who intend to make my people forget my name by their dreams which they relate to one another, just as their fathers forgot my name because of Baal? This next line here, verse 28, summarizes how I feel when I hear people tell of a vision or a dream. The prophet who has a dream may relate his dream, but let him who has my word speak my word in truth. What does straw have in common with grain, declares the Lord. The dream of the corrupt prophet was like straw, having little substance and of no help. God's word, on the other hand, faithfully presented was like wheat, of substance, nourishment, giving life, and having the power of multiplication. Verse 29. Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer which shatters a rock? Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, declares the Lord, who steal my words from each other. Behold, I am against the prophets, declares the Lord, who use their tongues and declare the Lord declares. All right, I've got to say it. Does this sound a little bit like when people say the Lord told or spoke to me? That's another phrase that raises red flags to me because there's so many times that it's used in a manner that does not align with scripture. It's very concerning. This discussion could go a lot deeper, but for the sake of time and keeping to our study, just be really careful when you hear those phrases. Go back to verse 28 and let him who has God's word speak God's word in truth. Amen. The canon of scripture has been closed. Let's keep it at that. Verse 32. Behold, I am against those who have prophesied false dreams, declares the Lord, and related them and led my people astray by their falsehoods and reckless boasting. Yet I did not send them or command them, nor do they furnish this people the slightest benefit, declares the Lord. Now, when this people or the prophet or priest asks you, saying, what is the oracle of the Lord? Then you shall say to them, what oracle? The Lord declares, I will abandon you. Okay, some very important verses right here. Then as for the prophet or the priest or the people who say, the oracle of the Lord, I will bring punishment upon that man and his household. Thus will each of you say to his neighbor and to his brother, what has the Lord answered or what has the Lord spoken? For you will no longer remember the oracle of the Lord because every man's own word will become the oracle and you have perverted the words of the living God, the Lord of hosts, our God. This says it all right here. When everybody and their mother hears from the Lord, their word becomes subjective, open to everybody's thoughts and interpretations rather than God's objective truth. Very, very important. Verse 37. Thus you will say to that prophet, what has the Lord answered you? And what has the Lord spoken? For if you say the oracle of the Lord, surely thus says the Lord, because you said this word, the oracle of the Lord, I have also sent to you, saying, You shall not say the oracle of the Lord. Therefore, behold, I will surely forget you and cast you away from my presence, along with the city which I gave you and your fathers. I will put an everlasting reproach on you and an everlasting humiliation, which will not be forgotten. The test throughout the ages of a real prophet of God is the truth. Just one word spoken in error of something that doesn't come to pass qualified that person as a false prophet. God does not make mistakes. So if someone spoke on his behalf and it didn't happen or wasn't true, instant hot water for that individual. And as we know, God does not take to it lightly. All right, really long chapter today. So just a simple prayer and we'll call it a day. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us with today. Please be with us as we enter the world and uh, guide and lead our choices and decisions and watch over our children and our families. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, guys. Hey, meditate on that one today. Um, it happens today, too. So if you hear anything going around that does not align with Scripture, Scripture is always the test to know if God has spoken. All right. Thank you for being here. God bless you. Take care.